Hey guys, just finished watching Krypton season one, episode two, House of L. Um, this episode was really it was interesting. I mean, it was a, a different episode. I mean, I guess I give this thing, this episode so far, I guess kind of a um, maybe a seven, seven point five type thing. There was nothing super duper interesting, super duper like, oh my god, you need to watch this episode because of this, because of that. Um, it wasn't an episode that you know I would show someone who's a fan of who's a fan who hasn't watched this episode. I mean, obviously, you just watch the first episode and you watch episode two, but. Um, it, it was an interesting episode. It was cool seeing the the logo pop up. You know when the, when he put his hand in. It's very cliche when they always when people cut their hands and uh, and then they, they need their blood type thing and they cut their hand type thing, which is kind of the worst place. If you're gonna need, if you need your blood like that, there's other places on, on your body you could easily do that. Yet he's Kryptonian, so I guess maybe his hand is different. But if you cut that deep into your hand like that, you're gonna like get some nerve damage and you're gonna hit like a lot of stuff so and you use your hands all the time so why not just you know your, your thigh a little bit or your your you know i don't know somewhere a little bit more it's not going to be you know you're not going to be injured with your hand cut all the time but um other than that uh, let's jump into it the first part is we get segal kind of saying no to adam strange we pick up right off of the first episode when adam strange gave him the the superman's cape and he still has that in his hand in this episode beginning of this episode but he says no to helping adam strange to saving krypton and all that he doesn't believe him um and then nisa vex uh, you know sends guards to fetch segal when he comes back and the guards are looking for him when he comes back to uh, Kandor and stuff. That was really cool. It was interesting with that, how she kind of sent to get him type thing. Um, and then the Sigel becomes part of the science guild. Um, and it's interesting to see to see that if he's still going to be part of that. Cause it's, it, it's, uh, it looks like he still is because the voice of Ralph said so. Later on at the end, we get Sigel kind of um, ends up giving gives Adam Strange two hours to prove that our Brainiac exists, which he later does by the end of the episode. And then Lita Zod ends up challenging the commander, um, Quinn Quixku. I I can't I don't know how to say that one, that word that name. Probably have to go and listen to it. Uh, but we'll have to say it again because he's he's dead at this point. Um, and then Nisa kind of gives. Um, gives Segal his parents ashes which we later find out that setup um was actually her father was also involved which her father's name is his name uh, Adam Strange uh Darren Darren Vex I think is his name I, I think that is, is the guy's name um and it's really gonna be cool to see or there how that that plays on you know if they're uh, you know looked like she was doing this on her own until it was revealed at the end of the episode that she was in league with her father and they're both you know they're working at it together type thing so that's gonna be just to play with that how that kind of goes on for the rest of the um the season and then we get um Sigil goes to the fortress of salt too that's where he cuts his hand and he activates the thing and like i said again it's kind of cliche to cut your hand and stuff um uh, but i guess where else is he going to do do it? it just it just seems every time i see someone do that um and i guess it's different here because he's technically not human Human, so maybe he has different stuff in his uh, in his hand type thing, different type of muscles and all that. But uh, the idea of doing that is always stupid because you know you're gonna now you have a huge scar on your hand. Even if you didn't cut tendons, which you most likely would if you went that deep. Um, but if you didn't, you now have a, a scar, and every time you do anything, uh, you know you're going to be aggravating that. It's going to take a long time to heal because you're all constantly doing and touching stuff with your hand. Uh, so how are you going to? Um, How's that? That's not going to heal as fast as somewhere like, you know, on your on your thigh or something like that. That's going to be protected by clothes or, you know, not going to be rubbing against things, touching things, holding things, or anything like that. Um, and then we get to, he activates his fortress and we get to see Valel, his grandfather, ends up telling him about the Phantom Zone. Um, I think that's really going to be cool to play with that. I think that's a cool idea. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, on Smallville, when they did the Phantom Zone, uh, they had, they would have... Um, the timeline the way time kind of passes in there like five minutes in there is like a day out here so i remember in smallville they spent like a couple of episodes where they spent just like three hours in there locked up in there because zod was in there i think there was a whole episode and then when they come back out of um when they come out of the phantom zone i think it was oliver queen and clark were both in there um but when they come back out of it everyone else had been waiting for like three weeks type thing way beyond the timeline the time type thing and i think that was an interesting idea to play with so i think it's going to be cool to see where things go with in this show how they're going to play with it i'm um, not going to maybe got to look it up to see whether or not that whole time difference and you no know, time 
passes a lot faster in there if what feels like five minutes there is actually an hour here type thing or a minute in there is an hour out in our time so i think that's really going to be cool to play with that and see how that's going to go in here uh in this show i mean i forget if they've i don't think they've ever done the phantom zone yet on um on supergirl uh although at least i don't think she's gone hasn't gone into it they might have sent someone into the phantom zone but i don't feel like you know i send an alien or send a bad guy into the phantom zone but i don't think supergirl herself has gone to the phantom zone yet from what i can remember i'm probably forgetting something but um, maybe we need to rewatch them on netflix um so yeah it's gonna be cool to play with that and see where things go with that and what timeline is and how that's gonna play off i think it's really gonna be interesting to see that and does adam strange know about the phantom zone i feel like he would you know because superman's you know put in put a few people there uh, i think it's gonna be cool to play with it and i was thinking about this with um you know with different stuff and the changing in destiny is an it ethnicities whatever uh ethnicities of ethnicities of ethnicities of the characters from the comics like for like zod type thing so that means he'll be different uh than you know when the zod that that kind of eventually goes to see uh superman especially if um you know it's superman is superman's mother going to end up being alita zod um is superman's mother going to be nisa vex type thing it looks like there uh there was that you know that, that trial that um sigil and vex had artificially you know where the science was in the first episode so maybe that could end up being superman uh you know maybe the vexes end up you know dying later on you know, brainiac gets the two of them and he ends up raising uh that uh, th that kid into being super into being superman type thing i think that's really going to be cool to see that or at least his son to be superman i think that'll be interesting to see how that plays off um or where where things will go on with that um, and then if, you know, Lita hooks up, who, if Lita doesn't have, uh, if Seagull and Lita, and, uh, Lita don't end up finally having a kid together and that doesn't become Superman, then who, then is she going to have, meet with someone else later on? And that's going to be, she's going to have, uh, Zod. I think that could be, could be interesting to see that. Um, or could Seagull have, you know, have the, the artificial science, uh, you know, kid with niece with uh, nissa and that becomes kal-el the comes he ends up turning that that kid ends up turning into uh jor-el and then uh, we end up having Le uh, Lita ends up having a kid also the natural way with um with uh with sega and that becomes general zod i think that could be a cool idea is at the end of the day they're kind of you know different uh cousins ish that they both have the same grandfather type of thing or step cousins i think I think that could be a cool um idea to play with but at the same time there still is that uh the idea that kal is supposed to be one of the last uh, natural births out there so i guess if his grandfather has sigil has uh, a natural birth has a natural uh natural birth with alita zod um, and then that becomes General Zod. I think that's really going to be cool to play with that and how that kind of, um, they're not the last, it, you know, Kella can still be Jor-El and, uh, I can't think of, uh, I don't know what, what, um, Laura L, Laura, Laura I don't, I'm not sure what, uh, um, jor -El's wife is, what Superman's, uh, grandfather, or mother's name is. I'm going to try and put it on screen if I can, but, uh, it's really going to be cool to play with that and see where things go. Um, with that and also like I get like I said I want to kind of look into it and seeing who is um, you know what is his what is Superman's mother's name uh, you know what is who does jor have like what is his birth mother's name uh, on Krypton to see you know is that family set up in here is it was it a Vex so I think it, I don't think it was Alora. I'm pretty sure it was Alora, um, but I'm not sure it was Alora. Laura L or Laura, what was her maiden name before that? I think that'll be cool to play with that, and then to see, um, you know, if we're gonna get to see her in here. And then also with this show, I think it'd be cool to see different actors. You know, get Dean Cain to make a cameo, get Helen Slater to make a cameo, which is not when they're not busy on, um, on Supergirl. But I could see them, you know, have them kind of make a, a one-time cameo type thing rather than making a, a reoccurring cameo. I like keeping those characters just for Supergirl because I think that's really it's a lot. It's, it's a lot more lighthearted and stuff. And I think it makes uh, it's a lot more fun to have them on there rather than having them here, where um, you know you're you're limited to what you can do. Whereas on Supergirl, you can do almost anything within all all and within the DC uh, stuff. And I think it's just more fun to, to do that. And the relationship that they've already set up is way better than you know just having him here, and which won't be any, any relationship to the you know not going to build up a relationship to this character. I think it's really going to be interesting to see. Um, 
if we get to see things like that, I think it would be quite fun to see. It would be cool to see someone like Tom Welling just kind of show up, even if he just at one point plays someone. If Brainiac ends up, you know, capturing and shrinking the city of Kandor and turns it into a bottom city of Kandor, and then Sigael ends up traveling, ends up jumping from one shrunken city to another, and then accessing different stuff like Superman has done throughout the comics when he's trying to escape Brainiac, he ends up flying from leaving uh, Kandor and going into another alien planet, alien city that has been shrunken by Brainiac. I think that would be cool. And then that's where you can have your Tom Welling, your Dean Cain, Helen Slater, any of those those people to cameo in. I think it'd be quite fun to see that. So all in all, it's really going to be cool to see where things are going with this. Um, especially after, like I said, Lita Zod is now going to be the general uh, of the, the the general of the, uh, of the troops to command ships. I keep on forgetting all these different, all these, uh, complicated names that they have for this um, but then after that we get Sigel refuses to become a Vex and he actually takes it off in front of um, Darren Vex he actually ends up cutting his his patch off but then uh, when Darren tries to stop him uh, the, the voice of Rowan is coming in and saying yeah okay take this this is the way we're going to do it um, but the vo- voice of Rao ends up it's interesting with this because so far the voice of Rao has always been he hasn't really done much and this is the first time the voice of Rao has even said like I think he's talked before but the first time he did anything uh, whereas before it always felt like Darren Vex uh, you know was always just kind of making him sound like he was saying these things so it was almost as it almost like that um, I can't keep on thinking of it but it was, it was a character in one of the Lord of the Rings where he was completely out of it but the his right hand man was always talking to his ear giving putting thoughts inside his head so it kind of sounded like that that's what was happening um, in this uh, we with, with Jer- Darren and um, and um, the voice around till he spoke and you know decided to make his own decisions here it almost seemed like you know darren was take, making his decisions sounding like they were becoming from uh rao and i think that was interesting to play with that especially now that rao's also you know has its own um its own idea with that and, and then also seeing the way sigel kind of you know d- doesn't bow when rao walks in the room you know the two others uh, the two vexes they both bowed a little bit even just nodded their head um when, when Rao entered the room, but uh, he didn't. So it's really going to be cool to play with that and how that looks into it, especially with, you know, if if his grandfather, just uh, Clark's, uh, if um, Kalel's grandfather, you know, just dis- despised Rao because of, it's, re- it's because of Rao that, you know, his grandfather's dead and his parents are dead. Uh, and then yet later on in a few decades when Superman is on Earth, he ends up, you know, praying to Rao and praying to different stuff. But I think it's going to be cool to do that. I mean, he wouldn't know the whole this whole story um, although, would he know these whole stories? Because it would be an interesting idea to see um, where things would go with with, with this. Because uh, would, can if Adam Strange goes back, you know, when when this is all over and they've stopped Brainiac, does Adam Strange go back to his time uh, and then you know, or does he stay here? And if he goes back to his time, he can't tell. Can he tell, uh, you know, Kal-El this whole story and recount the story? Oh, yeah, 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 your grandfather. Give him a note, kind of like Flashpoint and Thomas Wayne for with Bruce Wayne and stuff when Barry runs back in time and gives the note, even though the note shouldn't exist because the timeline has been reset to the point where he never wrote the note. But um, this would make sense. Uh, it would be interesting to see, especially if he's gone back in time uh, and he is able to give him a note to go into the future and do this. I think it would be quite interesting to see uh, to see that if we get to see a Superman or different thing like that, it could be quite fun to see that. And like I said, I think it's going to be cool to see where things are going. Um, and then we get to see at the end, we find out that what uh, Adam Strange and the bartender uh, found out in the in, uh, out and about type thing was the one of the beacons from Brainiac and proving that he's already there. So pretty much the Silver Surfer to the Brainiac as Galactus type thing. So I think that's really cool with that. And it means he's already around. And if you look at the trailers for the third episode, uh, it looks like Brainiac is literally already here. So it's really going to be cool to see where things go with this. And I'm really excited to seeing Brainiac in here. Hopefully with Brainiac, he can have already have uh, collected different cities and different uh, different stuff and different um, c- cities and planets and stuff. And that would be cool to see that and also see some references. Maybe he could have gone to Thanagar. Or, if I'm not mistaken, there was some talk about was it Drew Goddard type thing who is involved with this um did say that he wanted to bring 
uh, Thanagars will be involved in this, so that could be cool. Maybe it could be maybe one of the cities has a green lantern that Brainiac has shrunk and type thing, and that would be cool to see that. Uh, or different colored lanterns too. I think it would be cool. Not only just don't just show us a green lantern. Take you know go completely and you know have an orange lantern or a, a red lantern would be quite interesting. That would be a cool thing to uh, deal with for a season. Could be a season villain would be the red lantern core. That would be quite fun. Um, with that or different things and different stuff and also it would be cool to see them setting up kryptonite on here as you know different things and how does it kryptonite affect people when they're on here and how does some of this stuff become kryptonite or is that not something that they can touch upon maybe it's something they need to look into um how does kryptonite become before they can you know bring it in here and all the different versions of kryptonite from the gold kryptonite that takes away superman's powers permanently to the red the green kryptonite the red kryptonite blue kryptonite uh pink kryptonite which kind of makes them gay <laughs> um and then uh all the other different types of the silver kryptonite which makes him paranoid um the, the black kryptonite which kind of turned him into a at least in small but it did, it did turn him into a uh Jor-El following drone type thing so i think that would be interesting to see interesting thing to see where things go with that you know if does brainiac bring some of that does brainiac if brainiac is from the future like uh like adam strain says uh then is that because um is that is that because there's you know he does he bring kryptonite from the future or different things like that and i guess underneath a different uh, the the orange sun uh no yellow sun with it still i guess it wouldn't hurt or affect any of these people so i think it's going to be cool to see where things go in with this i think it's really going to be fun to see and i'm excited to see uh brainiac in next week's episode so this episode was okay on its own nothing super duper interesting but uh it was still an okay episode it wasn't a bad episode nothing really bad about it um although the fight with the leader zod and the commander that was kind of, there was not, the fight was okay, it was nothing super duper, it was obviously trying to be, you know, different and, uh, and you know, not look like anything else before because it's on a different planet, but um, there were, there it seemed like the stakes were kind of taken out of it because it's only episode two and he's, she's a love interest and she's not going to die in the second episode of this series at all, I think I knew that that character, she's been on the screen so much, she's the only other character who's having her own storyline other than Sagal type thing. Everyone else is has a storyline with Sagal, it's part of Sagal's storyline. She's the only one who has her own storyline that, very, that it does connect on there, but it's pretty much her own storyline type thing. We could almost have a show, I mean, you wouldn't, but there would almost be a, there's a big plot point with her own story. So it's like, obviously, she's not going to die in this. And, you know, it didn't seem like it, it made sense for her, for her to kind of be able to win this um, because this other guy's been training, been fighting for years. He probably has all kinds of skills type thing, whereas she couldn't defeat her mother. She couldn't uh, do anything. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see where things go with that and how they play out with her but um you know i just think they need to work on different things because uh, this fight scene although it was okay and it was it wasn't super you know oh my god it was an amazing fight scene but it was you know not too boring uh, it was kind of there were some parts was like oh okay that's kind of, kind of interesting a little bit but otherwise it was kind of just like okay and like i said the stakes were kind of completely taken out of it because it's episode two so there was no the stakes involved were kind of like oh yeah you know so if they actually had, you know, if she had died, if Lita Zod had died that way, and that would have been another attack on, uh, uh, another strike on Segel, then that I could have seen, that would have been interesting, that would have been unpredictable, but um, her winning was not really a shocker at all, so... All in all, this episode was was okay. You know, it was uh, like I said, a seven out of ten. It was you know decent, nothing bad or anything like that, but um, kind of an okay episode. But we'll have to wait and see uh, where things go because it looks like fun for the next week's episode if it is Brainiac joining. Although that could just be a season and trailer, since I'm not mistaken, it says here on IMDb we only have ten episodes for this season, so. We only have a few more left. So let me know what you think, guys, about this episode in the comments below. Season 1, Episode 2 of Krypton, House of L. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. kal -El, My future grandson. This is the story of the House of L. The story of your family isn't how we died. But how we lived.